Hi everyone, Ian here. Today I'm going to be talking about how I coded what you can see behind me here, our Christmas tree lights. I've coded some basic animations, hooked it up to the internet to receive notifications, and even went as far as calculating each LED's 3D coordinates in order to run mathematicians' code. So let's start by telling you how I've got everything set up. This adventure begins almost three months ago when I ordered these lights. We have a fairly small tree, as you can see, so not as big as some of the ones that are on the ground. Um, so I've purchased two strings of WS2811 LEDs. They're only available in sets of 50, and you chain each string together so you can plug them into one another. So in my case, I've ended up with a single string that has 100 LEDs on it. Now each LED is individually addressable and has a WS2811 chip inside it, which is most common for these types of string lights. This results in them being a fair bit chunkier than what you would normally see in typical Christmas lights. So 100 is about all my tree can manage in terms of weight. What these chips do allow, however, is it's possible to change the colour and brightness of each individual LED without affecting any of the others on the string. So you could have one lit on top of the tree, or the closest one to the plug at the bottom, or anywhere along the string length. These are actually rated for a variety of outdoor uses at IP68, so things like neon signs and stuff like that. Um, so they could be put along the outside of your house, along the driveway, or in a tree, say, and they'd still hold up in the lovely British winter weather that we have. You can also arrange them in any way you like, say like a grid or a circle, for example. To, so in a grid, you make a 10 by 10 matrix with 100 LEDs. And as long as you coded um, appropriately to factor this in, the, the arrangement that you've chosen, then it would work great as well. As well as a male and female connector on each set, uh, each string, there's um, also two bare cables for DC power. Now in my case the ground is white and the red and white cable is positive 5 volts. But other strings may have different colours. I've connected a barrel connector that is typically used on uh, security cameras onto this, uh, which then allows the lights to be powered by a 5 volt adapter that you might find on any electronic device. So uh, something else around your house. And annoyingly after having done this, um, I realised that I had no power adapters of five volt, uh, five volts, or the right size. So instead, I uh, ended up modifying a USB charging cable to have the male side of the barrel connector. Now my lights, as I said, are rated five volts, which is the same as USB power chargers. So I opted to use an anchor USB power adapter, which provides five five volt USB outs which are confirmed using a multimeter and you could use one of these um, these USB cables to add power to each uh, set of string lights as uh, the lights are actually tend to fade if you've got them all uh, daisy chained off one another along the length. Now I've opted not to do this as it's rare that we're going to be running them at full power all the time. So that's power for the lights, but if we only plugged it in power, nothing's going to happen. We also need something to control each LED along the strip and tell them when to light up. It would be enough to use a microcontroller, but most don't feature internet connectivity on their own. So I opted to use a Raspberry Pi of the non-Pico variety. So the 40 GPIO pins that are readily accessible make it perfectly perfect for this kind of electronics project. I started out with an original zero that I'd already modified with header pins and a wireless adapter and connected the white ground wire from the lights to physical pin 39 on the Pi and the lights green data wire to physical pin 12 which is GPI pin 18 on the Pi. So again your wire's colours may differ here. Conveniently this also meant that I could power the zero using the same anchor uh, USB charger adapter 2. Now this worked great for a while I tested to prove things work but then I wanted to live program my own animations without having to sit under the tree or work over nano over SSH. Using nano for development isn't great. Visual Studio Code has a great extension that I've used for this which is the remote SSH extension. 
it allows me to open a folder in code over SSH and work within it. So it's as if I'm on the machine itself. Unfortunately, the first edition zero isn't beefy enough to be able to be supported by this extension. And I didn't want to have to add header pins to the zero two as I own that I own, as I have already have plans for it uh, elsewhere in another project. I've therefore upgraded our lights to have a Pi 400 setup. So underneath the tree um, that is currently sat underneath the tree controlling everything. Um, and I sort of mean, well, it's sort of festive in its white and red case, um, but it's a bit weird having a keyboard under the tree there, I guess. Visual Studio Code working over SSH has been great for live coding. It's enabled me to sit on the other side of the room working on animations as if I was working on the 400 itself. And it sped up my development loop for massively for this project. Coming up with the light animations um, has been interesting. I started by using simple animations by switching 1 to 100 of the LEDs off and on again. And then I turn them on, all on and off at the same time, which gives them like a flashing effect. And flashing and turning lights on or off in its succession isn't particularly hard, but it doesn't make for the nicest compliment to our living room lights during Christmas. If you look at your own Christmas lights, you might notice that they make subtle brightness changes as well to make them more aesthetically pleasing. So... I'm quite lucky in that there is a lot of prior work in this area. So there's lots of code from people who have already created more interesting animations than me using a similar Pi based setups, which I'll link to in the description of this video. We're all using the excellent Adafruit Python Pic NeoPixel libraries for this. The libraries uh, demo rainbow animation is actually one of our favorites in the house, which you can see running behind us now. Um, so maybe coding Doing a bunch of coding myself uh, to do animations wasn't necessary at all. It's at this point I decided to take things a step further by making the lights available on our internal network. I've created a very basic Flask app with a HTTP interface with two main routes. Change, which allows to cycle which animation is running, and the flash, which flashes a tree a particular colour. So, for example, I should show you the flash animation now. There you go, so flashing red. And then it will return to the rainbow cycle that we had before. Voila. I've set the tree to flash to notify me of events. Currently it will cycle to see animations until I notify it of an event. And at the moment, it flashes blue when I get a Twitter follower and red when I get a YouTube subscriber. So if you subscribe to my channel, I'll know, in fact, that my whole family will because it will light up the lounge. And I know it's a little bit pain, but honestly, every time it happens, it makes me smile a little bit and it saves me idly refreshing the studio, YouTube studio app to find out these sorts of details. Now light in each LED based on its position on the string is great and all, but it isn't reflective of the actual position of the LED itself. The lowest positions on my tree, for example, may not be in fact LED 01. And in fact, actually, if you look at this, it is because they're dangling off the tree. Um, but because of how we expertly arrange them on the tree, you can see them go up and down as they go over branches. So in order to figure out what order they appear in, in particular axes, we need to figure out their 3D coordinates. And to do that, I've borrowed an idea from mathematician Matt Parker, where I by have lit each individual LED one at a time in a dark room and taken photographs of them. So if you do this and photograph them as you do so, and each individual LED as you do so, you can determine the XY coordinates. Then I rotate the tree 90 degrees to repeat that entire photography process again to get that Z coordinate too. Our tree isn't in the best situation for this, as you can see. There are is things underneath it. There are LEDs dangling off because people have been pushing things in and out. It's covered in decorations as well and butted right up against the wall. So light is badly obscured in the photos that I took. 
So I have my reasons for doing this. Um, one is, for example, is if you, have you ever tried to tell a child once the tree appears from the loft for Christmas that they can't decorate it? Yeah, sorry kids, we study just needs to calculate all the coordinates of the lights on the tree. Yeah, it isn't going to happen. But I did still want to uh, go through and try and test some of the animations that use this process though. After looking at the ropey images I'm taking and realizing all of my basic mistakes, I didn't want to spend much time trying to remember how to do image recognition on these photos, as I thought my results would be unreliable at best. I coded a basic web app using P5.js, which is for creative coders, which lined up the image I, images I'd taken side by side from each camera angle and allowed me to pick where I thought the pixel was with the mouse or the LED was with the mouse rather. It's sort of mechanical Turk style if you like, using me as the computer rather than any image analysis. Once these were submitted within a basic web app I'd written, I moved on to the next two images and I did this each time for each of the hundred LEDs, pointing and clicking, pointing and clicking, pointing and clicking. All the results were written out to a text file with each row in the file representing a different LED in the order that they were in the strip. I'm glad to say that I did this and it did appear to work. It's allowed me to run Matt's code on the tree, um, and but I think I need to scale some of the points down or something as the code seems pretty fast to run. It's likely that the coordinates aren't also going to hold up long though, not with two small people clambering for presents under the tree over Christmas. I fear that by, the, by Boxing Day all my coordinates will be out of whack for the year and I uh, won't be able to do anything else with them. There are more things that I want to try. Getting the tree to react to external input for example, like the sound from a microphone or movement from a camera. It would be pretty cool to get this working as a graphic equaliser for example. Adding more strings of LEDs with better coordinate calculation. Taking more measurements from, from different angles. I could also add a proper interface to the Flask app that I've created so that I can easily select programs that, that I'm using for the animations. Someday I may even get a bigger tree to be able to put all these extra LEDs on as well. If you've enjoyed this and you want to see more coding projects like this, then please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like the video. I've really enjoyed this project and I hope you do too. I wish you the best for Christmas and I look forward to making more projects like this next year. Okay, bye for now.